This is from SlashFilm.com. It is entitled, Voyager's Roxanne Dawson had a chance to direct Star Trek, but dropped it for another show. Star Trek has a long and proud history of having its star actors make the leap to the other side of the camera and flourish as directors in their own right. None other than Spock himself, Leonard Nimoy, took the reins on both Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, and its follow-up, The Voyage Home. Not to mention the various other films he would go on to direct, and almost direct, too. Jonathan Frakes, who portrayed the irrepressible William Riker on The Next Generation and Star Trek Picard and Lower Decks, also tried his hand at directing and would quickly become a franchise and enterprise, a franchise regular in the director's chair throughout various other Trek shows and movies as well. But Star Trek Voyager gave way to a truly unique career, which saw Roxanne Dawson go from playing the fiery half Klingon, half human, but Alana Torres, to finding great success as a gun for hire television director. This is where it gets juicy. With directing efforts on shows like Voyager, Enterprise, Lost, which was a great one, Lost to this day is one of the best pilots ever written. In the first 10 seconds of the first Mm -hmm. episode, you are hooked and you remain hooked until like, you know, it gets a little messy. But Lost, if you want to learn how to write pilots, watch Lost season Mm -hmm. one episode one it's a it's a screenwriting clinic in my opinion if i can add to that that's uh directed by jj jj abrams um heard of him so yep and it is i i 100 agree with you i actually thought it was the best film of 2000 whatever year that was 2004 2006 i'm not sure what year it came out but i thought it was the best film of that year even though it was tv show pilot oh wow yeah i i i that pilot is absolutely incredible on every level yeah, the second you put it on, you're just like, no spoilers to anybody that hasn't seen it yet. But in those first couple seconds, you're just hooked. You're watching minute by minute, second by second. Perfect. Okay, so let's continue on with that. I was only going off on a lost tangent because it was directed by J.J. Abrams, as John Argyla <laughs> points out to save me. <laughs> <laughs> She was most recently put in charge of two pivotal episodes of Foundation Season 2, the Apple TV Plus sci-fi series based on Isaac Asimov's novels. In an exclusive interview with Slash Film, our very own Vanessa Armstrong was recently able to speak with Dawson about the possibility of returning to Trek, returning to the Trek fold. Here's what Roxanne Dawson said. I have thought about it. And they have kindly also come to me about a few of the shows. But I think at the time they were starting to come out, I hadn't done science fiction in a while. And I was trying to move away from that. I didn't feel a need to go back. And then this science fiction show Foundation came up. So this was the first science fiction that I'd done in a while. Hmm. It's not very convincing to me. She also continues... And I remember, I probably shouldn't say this, but one of the first foundation creator, David Goyer, one of the first things foundation creator, David Goyer said to me, he goes, you know, we're not going to be shooting Trek here. This is not Star Trek. I went, yes, I understand. I understand. And I was kind of like, well, have you really seen Star Trek? The current versions of Star Trek, I think are wonderful. I've. I love that she's saying she watches current Star Trek. I'm all, I'm almost taking it a different way. Like it sounded like she, he's like, we're not making Star Trek. She's like, no, 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 no. But have you ne- seen the new stuff? It's wonderful. What? Yeah. Mm. I got that too. <laughs> kind of. I did get that too. <laughs> Initially. I was like, mm. I still she's so gracious. Visit the old stuff too. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. The old stuff is is like where you learn how to sci-fi, I think. Mm -hmm. Sci-fi done right. The old stuff is also wonderful. Let's uh, let's be clear about that. Yes. That's like later on and also um, when Trek Movie covers this, but then like a couple other like directing clinics that she did where uh, they like 
got the panels that she was on. And I mean, we I'll just go ahead and say, like, she goes on to say, like, how amazing the gift is that Star Trek gave her and like mm. learning how to be a director. And in like the most, like she was like, it was such a unique gift because it basically everybody there wanted you to succeed and like mm-hmm. really was supportive and there for you so that you could learn along the way as opposed to like just a random job where nobody cares. So I think that's just the, that kind of atmosphere. I feel like Star Trek, she gets so much credit for creating for its like up and coming directors, especially yes. the women. That How many have. other shows ever have created this many directors have right. uh, been like right. a breeding ground for directors, mm-hmm. you know? So- well, and, Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, no, but, and they're continuing this trend into the new Star Trek realm as well. They're, they're pulling from the pool of people that they've worked with and, and giving them work still, um, which is great. And, and letting people try their hand at, at new um, vocations, I guess, mm-hmm. um, which is great. It's a great tradition to uphold, I think. Yeah, I heard the uh, people among the people that are directing Discovery Season 5, Shazad Latif, uh, Riley Alazraki, uh, if I'm I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, Naomi Wildman, Murph, they're uh, all uh, scheduled. Murph is a diva behind the camera. (laughs) But he's got a good eye for color. He's for. (laughs) But not just direction. And that's a little bit too literal. I mean, I'm saying in general, uh, there are there are people stepping outside of the box. I mean, look at um, Tawny Newsom. She's she's a writer now. Yeah, totally. You know, yeah. so it, they they are continuing on the tradition of of mm-hmm. allowing their actors to branch off into different roles. Mm-hmm. And speaking about speaking of that tradition really quickly, one of the great things about the Rick Berman era of Star Trek in the 90s was that they did two amazing things. They they actually produced well, they allowed people who were, who were wanted to be screenwriters but did not have professional credits to submit spec scripts and then they would actually produce those scripts. That's how we got Ronald D. Moore yes. um, among other people. And then they also did directing school. Actors who wanted to learn how to direct got to learn how to direct. And that's how we got Jonathan Frakes and Roxanne Dawson and Robert Duncan McNeil. And, you know, and we 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 would have had um, Dominic Keating and I think Connor Trenier too had Enterprise been able to continue past season four. Just want to point out one quick uh, comment in the live chat. Faith Howell says, Roxanne Dawson did Foundation. I'm watching that. I can always tell Roxanne's work. They're always the best episodes. And I do want to agree with Faith there that Roxanne is another one of the amazing directors that Star Trek has churned out with this extremely supportive uh, company and group and franchise that, uh, yeah, creates writers it brings people in and turns them into you know staff writers or or showrunners even and mm-hmm. it has people actors and turns them into directors it gives everybody a chance and i remember when i first found out that Roxanne Dawson was directing it was way back in the enterprise days i don't remember what the episode was or what there was some kind of featurette I was watching and it was showing Roxanne Dawson uh, behind the camera and directing, you know, an episode of enterprise. It was something to do with enterprise and, and it was kind of interviewing her. And I was like, damn, she really knows her stuff. And she looked like badass Cause she had like a hat on her glasses, her hair in a ponytail. She looked like she, she was like ready Jane for Wacker, Yeah, She yeah. looked like she was ready for <laughs> battle, you know, it was great. So good on yeah. her there. And storyboarders turning into directors, too. Yes, absolutely. As we found out in uh, Lower Decks, just mm-hmm. recently, uh, season four, episode three, Brandon Williams, that was his very first uh, directed episode as his directorial debut. And we had him on The Seventh Rule talking about that episode with us. So go check that out. That's a few days ago, the most recent episode. I want to finish up this uh, quote from Roxanne Dawson. It continues, well, have you really seen Star Trek? The current versions of Star Trek, I think, are wonderful. 
I've seen Discovery. I've seen Picard. I think there's there's such wonderful and modern work being done there right now that we really can't categorize it in the way that we might have in the 90s. But no, I haven't really wanted to go back. I feel like I've been there and I've done that and I love moving on to other things. So that's where I am with it. That makes me sad. Really fast, Aaron Wolke said on Prodigy, they made a point to promote from within and give Trek scripts to people outside of the writing staff to help them learn the craft. They hired the youngest Trek writer in history in season two. So cool. Alex. I love that. So awesome. Continuing the legacy of Star Trek Mm -hmm. being like, you know, Star Trek is basically like Starfleet Academy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Starfleet Academy for the entertainment industry. Uh, Look at at people like Terry Metalis. He started off as a PA on Voyager, I think, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or even like um, DC Fontana, like started out as an assistant, I think on Lieutenant, and then switched over, was an assistant, but got hired as for writing. Lisa Kling. Especially at a time when women weren't writers. Jerry Mm -hmm. Taylor. Right. Lots of big ones. Uh, Okay. So, I don't know. I'm kind of sad about that. I'm, you know, just to be perfectly honest, I want Roxanne Dawson to direct something. I, you know, honestly, I feel like she could direct a Lower Decks episode. I feel like she could direct Discovery. I feel like she could direct, you know, Star Trek Legacy, not that we know anything about it or if it's happening, but I feel like she could have her hand in, in there. I'm not sure about Mm -hmm. Prodigy. That's a different feel, but maybe... Mm -hmm. Starfleet Academy. Well, and I would love to see her perspective um, brought to life on screen again, because I I feel like that her perspective is might differ from some of the directors that we might currently have now. Not saying anything bad about them, but it I I like to look at things from a different perspective and from other people's points of view, and I think that she would bring that that uniqueness to an episode or two or three. Mm-hmm. So everybody yes, in the live chat. I forgotten that LeVar Burton is a director. Yes, right. LeVar. Right. We just, Even Dorn uh, directed, if I yes. remember correctly. They all did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think Sir Patrick Stewart did one or two. Yes. Yeah, and Avery Gates. Brooks. Right. Gates. Mm-hmm. Yes, Avery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, everybody in the live chat. If Roxanne Dawson were to come back and say, okay, I'll do two episodes of Star Trek, what series would you want her to direct? Would it be, you know, would it be the what would be the best fit or what would Same. you just enjoy the most? Strange New Worlds might be a good one too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would have said Discovery as well. Mm-hmm. Like Anne Murray. Uh that ship may have imagine, sailed. Imagine Roxanne Dawson <laughs> <I know. laughs> directing. Imagine Roxanne Dawson directing a Starfleet Academy episode. Tawny Newsom wrote. Oh, that would be cool. Same it's also quote. really cool to see like the Directors Guild having her come as a special speaker, like for um, different like different combinations of people at different stages of their directing careers. It's just. She is such an inspiration. She amazing. was speaking at the Directors Guild. Uh, just few months back uh yeah. so she's definitely highly touted amongst her peers which is great oh. here's another quote she says i am the luckiest director out there because i began a directing career with people who didn't want me to fail that wanted mm-hmm. me to succeed paramount became my school you learn so much from watching other directors tackle problems and then she goes on to say that's the wonderful thing about being an episodic director if you do several shows in a season and they're all different i mean you get to just jump into all these different ways of shooting and study them and get a get good at them and embrace them and i think that is the gift of being an episodic director and also the obligation to really take that seriously and to learn and study every show that you're going into and to make sure that you understand their visual language and make it happen with your own twist. That's a really interesting point is if you're directing something like Voyager or Enterprise, for example, 
episodic shows, you are directing a comedy and four weeks later, you're directing a horror episode. Mm -hmm. And then seven weeks later, you're directing the holodeck episode of the week with, (laughs) (laughs) or a time travel episode. Like that's really got to be fun, but also petrifying. Mm. Really cool. I, there's, I've been listening to a lot of um, enterprise incidents, which is the TOS um, review podcast with Scott Vance. And they've been having Ralph Sinensky on who directed like seven episodes of TOS He's in his 90s and has like the best memory ever. And it's just like incredible hearing from different directors from different like series starting from back then and how different TV was back then. It's just mind blowing. Can't recommend can't recommend those Ralph Sinensky like Enterprise Incident episodes enough. And also sometimes Larry interviews him. He just had on nice. the Trek files. It's just it's I love hearing from these directors and also like. When the directors are super successful and amazing, oftentimes they're too busy to be like going to conventions and doing Mm -hmm. interviews and things. So we sort of like don't hear from them about their amazing careers as much at the time. So it's nice that she's been doing some interviews and we're getting to hear more from her. It would be interesting to watch her, just watch her on set and and see how she operates and um, yeah, and how she talks to actors and how she talks to everyone. and. Yeah, it's always fun to watch. So yeah. these little rascals in the live chat, you know how Star Trek fans are. You go, what would you like Roxanne Dawson to direct? <laughs> Discovery, Prodigy, Strange, what do you got? And of course, you know, Star Trek fans are like, all of them. Yay. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, we want all Star Trek. <laughs> Honestly, if there wasn't a director attached to the Michelle Yo one, I feel like that would be a good match. Oh, but yeah. I think there was a director attached. No, there is. There's all a turn day. It's all a Oh, right. yeah. really? Yeah. Right. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Who has directed Discovery, but I think he also mm-hmm. did some Picard as well, didn't he? Yeah. I think he's the supervising director of Discovery. I think he's the top yeah. guy. And he, he directed the second half of the finale. And then mm-hmm. Jonathan Frakes did the first. The first. Half. Yeah. Hmm. Brent Harris says Legacy. Lucia Raz says Strange New Worlds. John Davis says Strange New Worlds. Chris Gavin says Strange New Worlds. BL says Strange New Worlds. Peter C says Lower Decks. May Borello says Legacy. They're all going for the serious ones. We've never seen. Have we seen Academy at some point? But it's have we ever seen her direct anything comedic? I don't don't know, know. but but she could do something on Strange New Worlds that lends itself to comedy because. Strange New Worlds does lend itself not only to drama, but to comedy as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 